experience of the Canadian experts of QTIS and how to change your values into socially responsible actions. Why the companies that are introducing the certain codes of behavior, they're becoming better than the companies that do not do that. And why ethical behavior will improve the trust and confidence of your supplier and counter partners and will engage more producers and will engage the Canadian buyers more. What are the best practices of the socially responsible businesses and how those practices can help small and medium businesses to develop long lasting business relations with Canadian partners? So we are about to discuss it today. And as a first speaker, I would like to invite Maria Guzman, who is the expert of the apparel market on exporting to Canada and from the Export Canadian board. She is the consultant for Kitties for 20 years already. Maria is helping the producers of different countries from all over the world to start exporting to Canada and to establish a good collaboration with Canadian buyers. She knows everyone and everything on buyers in Canada, the specifics of communications with them, what you need to become successful and what you should never do in under any circumstances so please use this opportunity to ask the questions to our experts and maria the floor is yours thank you olga so good afternoon to everybody who uh, have a, i am very pleased to be with you all of you and be able to transfer my knowledge and a little bit of my experience uh, with all of you, and I hope it's going to be a dynamic and very um, interesting learning experience for you and for me, because the idea is also to have opened the door for communication and for exchange uh, um, questions and ideas about social responsibility. Why are we talking about this right now? Why it's so relevant at this moment in history, not only for buyers and producers, but for all the world who's having a very much sensitive sensitivity about what's happening with uh, with everybody. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, my presentation is very simple, it's very short, but I will give you a couple examples of my experience with SMEs around the world and with uh, buyers from Canada and North America, uh, including the US that um, can illustrate to you and give you a simple idea and very practical what social responsibility means and what is a, the whole purpose in order for you to help you very, uh, very deep and very practical. So I will share my screen and I will show you a couple of my slides that I prepare for you. So once again, Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. It's early in the morning for us here. I know it's an afternoon for you, so you're very active. I just got my coffee, my water, and my vitamins, and I'm ready to go. So um, all these years working with some of you and basically with the SMEs from Ukraine and around the world, I always give, you, give them this kind of practical tips. Practical tips for business. This is business oriented. I'm always into business. I'm always into closing the deal, always in making the money, making the things happen. And all that works if we follow certain rules for, um, for business uh, behavior, for product category, for quality, for quantity, for price. So you have a very, uh, very condensed tips that I always give at the end of my presentations so you to keep in mind that this is gonna be something that is gonna guide you through the business process. Today, I decide to start with this final slide from my previous presentations and give you as an, as an open uh, opportunity to navigate and see, I'm not gonna read them all because it doesn't make any sense for me to read them, but you will have this presentation. So you will have the opportunity to be in depth of, on each point, how to continue with a business and how to lose a buyer. Very practical, for example, 
failing with the answers of the emails and the phone calls in 24 hours. When you put the, the, the samples are very well done, the negotiation is done, and then suddenly you change the quality of the, of the, of the delivery of the order, or you raise the prices even for one cent, two cents, something that is gonna break the deal, you have it there. But then, okay, we got the business, we understand everything about production, we already been working for a year with a potential buyer, we already achieved the prices, we already achieved the quantity, we already achieved the colors, everything is there, and suddenly I'm going to talk about CSR. Oh my gosh, it's such a uh, big concept, but at the end, it's such a sensitive but so realistic concept. So I imagine you guys like this uh, slide, what are you guys talking about? We spent already a year and a half working on the commercial aspects, on the business aspect, on quantity, quality, color, fitting, marketing. Oh, and then you're gonna drop on me this bomb, CSR. Michael, my colleague, is uh, waiting for the presentation. He will come after our questions and answer session. He will give you, he's an expert on CSR and he will give you an idea, very clear idea what CSR means. But for me, let's go to the business. Again, my side is the business. So I am going to talk about what is important. Why you said, oh, but, who cares? I have product, I have competition with my product, I do have the best buyers around the world, and you sit down with a buyer from Canada or even from US and you start talking to them and said, listen, um, we got the best price, we got the best colors, we got the best quantity, we delivered the headers, the fastest, everything is on time, everything is on chart, and then suddenly they wanna talk about CSR. They want to ask you questions and why it's important you have the points there then there's some parts that the very basic like working hours they will ask if they go and visit your factory or your facilities they will ask, ask randomly any uh, worker how many hours you work what is your schedule what is uh what is the um, the time that you have for lunch what is the time that you have? Do you have breaks? How many breaks do you have per day? So this is talking about, I'm going to give you a rough idea and then Michael will jump into more specifics. But this is important because it's the core of the sensitive matter for the, for the buyers. It doesn't matter if they are in the US, in Canada, in Europe, in uh, anywhere. It's a matter that, and more relevant than ever, they're going to going to come to you and they're going to ask you, do you have any social responsibility with your uh, stakeholders, with your workers, with, uh, with the people, with your consumers, with the people involved with your business, with your partners, with your business partners, and you're going to be blank. You're going to be like, sure, we do. We, we, I've seen it before. Oh yeah, we do. We we create programs for saving uh, the little cows. And okay, so if you have something like that, you have to show. You have to come with the results. You have to come up with the program. So in the side of the left side in my screen, you have some examples of the elements for CSR and on the right you have why it's important how it, it helps your business to develop a productive and innovative program so very very basic as as I said uh, Michael will jump into more examples but right now let's continue the do's and the don'ts for example you have to be authentic. You have to, when you create a CSR program, or not even a program, you don't even know what a program is. You are such a petite company that you have no uh, en enough um, capacity to create a program for daycare, or you know you don't have a, enough capacity to create a CSR program for a special needs. Those are very 
uh, more into corporate CSR, but in a simple way to decide what it matters for your business. You from the beginning decide that your workers are a priority and you put them place that. You decide that every time that you make business with a supplier, you're going to check where the suppliers are coming from, where are the fabrics coming from, the, the yarn, how do they, do they process the yarn? It is a natural dye or it's a, it's a very, uh, how it is behaving with the, with the supplier into your product with taking care of nature and the environment. You decide as a, as a, as a company, what are your values? You decide where is the content or the purpose of your company. So you have a very clear understanding when to present your program to the buyers. Let's, I'm gonna give you an example. You already got the appointment with the buyer, either is by Zoom right now, uh, and by using our platforms or either in person in the future. And you go and sit down with them. You talk about your company, you talk about the benefits of making business with your company, you talk about the pros, you talk about prices, you talk about quality and quantity. You have everything on the table. But then you just come up and said, and we also have a program for uh, women. We train women in every once per month, once per semester, we train the woman to, to be able to how something develop as something different. Uh, it can be another language. We train the woman in English because we want the woman to succeed. We understand the value of the woman. Women are very important for our company. So see, it's coming from your purpose. It's coming from your mindset. What is the important point in your company? So once you have that, you present that to the buyer and the buyer will look at you and say, really, tell me more about it. And then you have to come up with a total idea about your program. Okay, this is what we do. This is what we do for women. Another very clear example that you can present to a buyer is when you talk about environment and said, listen, we have already this amount of products and we treat water in a different way. We used to, we used to have the, the water um, treating the, the, let's see, the denim, which is the most toxic um, material to try to process in the textile and apparel segment. Denim is the worst in order to, to treat them in order to produce a garment. So you said, okay, I'm a denim producer. I produce jeans and jackets and dresses. Okay, how do you treat the water? And they can tell you, well, we do have a new equipment that is gonna treat the denim without any water, without any problem. We just bought this equipment from Germany and we put it on place in our Kiev facility and we're working to the, together with the Germans and the Germans are coming to our facility and they give us a training every six months we've renovated we have this kind of certificate okay so can we see it we have certificates you have to show them as I said to you before you claim it you prove it you have to show the certificates well, let's see you don't have the certificates but you have the equipment because you don't have the money to set up the, the certificates yet, but you have the equipment. You show it, you say it. You have to be generous with your presentations when you have a buyer. It's not only about quantities and quality and price. It's also about social responsibility. So you have to uh, be able to promote your ideas. Buyers are open for innovation. A, they go to one to 150 suppliers per day. They tell me every day, Maria, do you know how many suppliers I have to look into my email? Do you know how many sweaters I see per day? Do you know how many dresses I see per day? What is the value of your company? What is the value that you put on the table and you said, listen, I understand you have dresses. I do have dresses too. I understand you have cotton. I do have cotton too. I understand you have uh, polyester. I do have this amazing polyester too. However, 
I also have this uh, program for my for my uh, buyers, or I have this program for my um, workers, and I have this program for my sourcing. So you have to show it, even though it's a simple breakfast, even though you give breakfast to your employees, even though you go in Christmas time to celebrate with the kids in the hospital, something that collects your values and your desire to put something valuable in your company. That is important. That you may think that that's nothing because, oh, it sounds so cliche that we're going to go to Christmas to the hospital. It's not, it's a value added to your product because what happened after they decide, and we're facing this right now, we have a very well known potential buyer working with some of our companies. And now after all the process of negotiation and fitting and changing materials and, and uh, giving to the price up and down and yes or no and emails back and forth and calls and meetings, she's telling me, what is the value of the companies? Like no money wise, but tell me about the social responsibility. And I don't want any of you to be achieving one of the good buyers that you dream with. And then at the end, he's gonna, she or he is gonna ask you, where is your uh, social responsibility content? And you're gonna look at them like, what are you talking about? What is this? I want you to know and be prepared that eventually it will come. The question from a buyer will come. What is your program for social responsibility? Right now, we're doing everything by Zoom. So we, we have an advantage and disadvantage. The advantage is that they don't go there, but it's a disadvantage as well. But when they go there and they see your factory and they visit and they walk through your offices and they walk through the, through the uh, factory uh, installation, they will see the, the can with the trash can. They will see, for example, the first aid kit. Do you have first aid kit? Oh, what, what, what? Excuse me, what? First aid kit. Mm. Well, and they will look at me like, what are you talking about? Okay, do you have a dick hug or they have headache? Do you have a first aid kit? Uh, no. Okay, okay. Simple things, detailing, the, the winning things is on details because you already achieve and you know you're a good, you're a good producer. You already know that you do very well on what you know and what you do for years. And you can talk about how many buyers around the world that you have and, and you will produce for this and that and that. And then suddenly they ask you, did you have first, first aid kit? No, okay. So you're missing something. So I want you to be aware that little details make a change. When they go to you and when they show, they see how you treat your, your employees. So let's go back to the do's. Be confident. Have good communication with your stakeholders. Be respectful. Be confident about what you know and what you do. And that, that after the CSR program that we are implementing at this point, be confident about, yes, I have that. Or no, maybe I not. Let me ask Michael, let me ask Maria. Maybe I don't know very well if I am doing this. Is a CSR or is just a program that I just randomly present. So be confident about your knowledge and about your expertise and also about the understanding of the CSR and put your attention in details. I'm gonna give you another example that um, it's gonna combine with do and don'ts. Uh, details for me and for any buyer are key. It's not only production, it's not only, as I said, the nice fitting, the best supplier, it's also details. So I was in a, I'm gonna to go to the don'ts because it's coming from that. I was in an inspection with a very big uh, dreaming buyer the buyer that you dream, the buyer that you've been looking, and finally you have it in your factory. Finally, you have it in your office. It happened to be two ladies and the buyers. And we were there working with this factory for two years already. And they were talking and suddenly they said, um, we need to go to the washroom. Oh yeah, sure. 
the washroom. Okay, the washroom is right there. The ladies' washroom is right there. Just cross the hall, turn to the right, blah, blah, blah. And they went there and I was with them. So we went together, they up, tried to open the door. It was closed, it was locked. Okay, it's locked. Let's go back to the office. Oh, the door is locked. Where is the key? Who has the key? And the owner of the factory, very well known, huge factory said, oh, the key, the key, the key. We only allowed the workers to go to the washroom a certain time. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that because you may think that that is correct and okay, but think about that. The buyers dropped the prices. It was almost two years and a half working back and forth. And you know how hard it is to achieve a buyer. Some of my companies, they're already whining to me. They're crying to me every day. Maria, where is the decision? Maria, where is the buyer say it? Back and forth, back and forth. It's like a tennis game, back and forth. A match, plum, plum. And then suddenly, when you just get in to know the containers, you said, we only have time, certain times, a schedule to go to the washroom, done. I cannot tell you what happened after because I will cry again. All the job, everything went to the drain. It was impossible in the buyer's mind to think that at this point in life, you have a schedule for the washroom. And on top of that, there were ladies. And on top of that, there was the clothes, the, the washroom lock was the ladies' washroom. Done, 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 done. Second example, this is simple ones. You see, it's not like, oh, I have to do this and I have to uh, create a program with the United Nations and we're gonna save the elephants. And I would love to see you doing that, believe me. <laughs> I would love you to have a program to save the elephants, but it hasn't had to be that, that a specific. You will do it when you claim uh, to become a very um, big company. So another one. We were in another factory again and we were talking and then suddenly it started to rain. Another set of buyers from US. And they started raining, 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 poor raining. It was in a country in Central America and it was pre raining, some tropical rain. And the, suddenly the buyer looked into the window and said, is that, is those are the bicycles from the, from the employees? Yes, those are the bicycles from every, wow. But it's very sensitive. It goes like, but they don't have anything to cover the, the space for the bicycles. What do you mean? What do you mean? The, the, the owner of the factory turned around and said, what do you mean? Well, I can see your cars and the, all the people who works here, uh, the, the administrative part and you know the, the business part, they all have cars and they have the garage cover. And I see 150 bicycles outside without any protection. So they were like, what do you want me to do? In order for me to continue doing business with you, I need you to cover and make a, a, a set, I mean, a cover place like as, a, as a little garage for their bicycles. Bye. That was it. And then you send me the proof, you send me the pictures, and we will continue. Social responsibility in action in a very simple way. Think about it. I want to leave this, this uh, presentation with questions for you because I want you to think about it. Don't, don't treat your coworkers wrongly. Never in a meeting, in a Zoom meeting, in a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, make your coworkers to be quiet. Shut up, you don't know what you're talking about? No, or something like, uh, I told you before, you don't do this like that. You don't, not even in a different language. 
not even take advantage that we don't speak Ukrainian or Russian, don't even, because the buyers are clever. Some of them, they speak language and they, you wouldn't even know they're understanding you. So be very careful how you treat your stakeholders that are your coworkers. Anybody who works with you, the one who opens the door, the one who serves the coffee, the one who is negotiating with you and the buyer in front of a camera or outside of the camera. Do not, uh, anybody, anybody that gets, it's a basic um, behavior, common sense on human beings, but we tend to see our board workers like, okay, they belong to us and we can treat them however we want. So be careful with that. Don't claim what you don't have or cannot measure. Something that you said, I'm protecting the lions from Africa. Oh, really? How? Well, I just love them. You know, I love lions in Africa. No, it's a, it's a good start, but don't claim that because you're not doing anything for the lions in Africa. You have to come up with a program or you have to come up with some steps. For example, I have my Ukrainian company who was here in August uh, last year before the COVID. It was, she was negotiating with the buyers. She was presenting samples, price lists, marketing material, everything ready, chart check, 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 check. And then she said, we work with, we have a, a corporate program, social corporate program for women in violence. Like when they're suffering violence for, in the family, in the household, we work with them. Oh, the buyer, I remember the buyer, they move, it was, a, it was a big table with many buyers and they move everything, tell me about it. And she came up with the catalogs and she came up with, with the pictures and she came up with everything that proved that, yes, we're doing this. We have this program, we have 50 women, we, we do this, we do that. Part of our uh, revenue, one cent per dress goes to create the, the program and goes to support the woman and support the program by training. It's not that we, 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 we cannot support them by paying for rent and groceries and, and, and daycare. We can do that, but we train them and we buy a, a equipment for them directly. That's something that you measure and prove. You have the support to say, this is what I do. Besides everything else, they will catch it up. They will catch it up on the air when you talk to them. They will know if you are a good, respectful uh, player or if you are treating them, uh, your employees and everybody else like nothing. They will get it from the email, from the first, dear Maria, they will get it. They will get what kind of company you are working with and representing or having. So be mindful. Everything is in the details. Do not be afraid again to the CSR idea. Don't be overwhelmed. It's part of your core. You need to be sensitive. You need to be realistic. You need to understand that right now people is looking for that. Buyers are looking into the check, 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 check of business. And then you come with your ace at the end of the game and said, and I also have this. Do not think the CSR is not necessary. It's very important for your business opportunities. Every one buyer that opens a door for you, it will be, lead you to another one, to another one, to another one. Because then you have the reference and you can say, listen, I made business with this Canadian company that is well known by CSR, by prices. Okay, yeah, sometimes it's happened to me. I don't have to say anything to a buyer about a company and said that they are in Ukraine, they produce blouses and they're already selling to this buyer. Okay, like it, send it to me. I don't have to talk about anything else because once you open a door with a good high quality buyer, you will have another open door and another open door and another open door. So this is my presentation. As you see, it's very simple. I don't want to make any, any extravagances here. I want you to be clear about CSR. I give you some examples. I illustrate the most uh, practical way how to be sensitive. Don't think about it's a monster. Don't think about like, ooh, I don't want to know anything. It's simple. 
it's it's very relevant and is very active at this point in history. So I would like to see if you, anyone has a question, a comment, any experience to share with us. We would love to hear from you. Maria, yes, we have. Oh, <laughs> we were just, uh, Maria, uh, yes, Maria, we have a couple of questions. Pani Larisa, Larisa is asking whether there has to be a specific, a specific way how you can build up, how you can shape up your social responsibility policy. Is there any specific form how you have to design your corporate social responsibility programs? I think my uh, amazing co-worker which is in africa right now with my lovely lions and elephants it's gonna give us a hint about that because any the buyers there are two different kind of buyers the one who are gonna take you on inspection company they're gonna hire a third party to do an inspection in social responsibility and yes that buyer is going to give you a whole uh questionnaire that you have to follow but it's a second kind of buyer that is mid-size is not compromising it doesn't have the, the the economic support to go outside the outside and hire a second or third party to do the inspection those are the ones that we're working right now. Why? Because when we work with SMEs, it's very, very hard to expect from them inspections uh, because they're very expensive and do modifications because as, after an inspection, it comes the modifications. Like for example, the, the garage. That was a simple, simple question. I have another, like, another example, like uh, again with the washrooms, no toilet paper. No toilet paper, and that's simple. That shows that you are taking care of your, uh, your workers. When you see no toilet paper in a, in a factory, you go like, hmm, hmm, how they do it? How they go to the washroom? So after an inspection, they come the yes, the list of what you need to change and modify to a second inspection. And then it comes the results. But because we are SMEs right now, I cannot expect anything like that. So right now, my strategy for all of you is to work with potential buyers that I are, uh, they are the same size as you, they are in the same economic level, they are not big as, but not as small as they're in the middle. So yes, maybe Michael, he will give you a little bit more ideas about this. Uh, так, Марія, дякую. А, але ще є запитання. От, yes, thank you, Maria. But we also have another question. Uh, for example, Larissa is once again is saying that in their company, for example, it's all has been uh, shaped up and worded in the collective agreements. What are the any specific benefits that are provided for the employees of the company? For example, the free English lessons, the medical insurance, additional opportunity to go to the gym. So maybe we wanted to ask about that. So how should you design it and word it? There is another question from Vitali coming up. So uh, the BLCI certificate is accepted by Canada as a proof for the social responsibility of the company. Okay, so um, regarding the how did you present them is like, uh, as I said to you, you have to uh, find a way to uh, be accountable. It's not like an, a specific format. I know we look for formats. So say, so tell me, Maria, what do I need to do? One, two, three, four, done. Like the business, we need this, 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 done. But in this case, because it's a personal choice based on your, on your values and based on your interests, I cannot tell you exactly, let's see if you wanna work with the English classes, you need to show that. It doesn't mean like you need to have a certification for English classes. It's just like, okay, in my meeting with my buyer, after I talk about my products and my prices, I, I show that I'm sensitive with my CSR program. And I come and said, okay, this is what I also do in order to fulfill your orders. You have to connect the dots. You have to understand that orders come attached to human beings 
and odors come attached to environment and odors come attached to gender. So you connect the dots and you said, in order for me to produce your dress, I'm working with this supplier who is respectful of the environment. It comes together, it's not one or, it comes together. So the line of your core of your values, the core of your understanding is very important how you present it. Regarding the second question uh, about the uh, certificate, I will ask that to Michael because I'm not an expert in certificates for, him, for uh, social responsibility but I just want to give you my perception based on my experience with any kind of buyer, the good one, the bad one, the big one, the, the little one, the short one, the Asian, the Southeastern Asian, the, the South American buyer, everywhere you go is the same. So they have the sensitivity for social responsibility because they're gonna claim it in the product. Once they claim it in the product, because that's the distinguished part with your dress and somebody else's dress, it has to be true. So Michael, um, Yes, thank you, Maria. There is another question oh. for, for you. In your opinion, when it is the best time for the Ukrainian producer to show the Canadian buyer that the Ukrainian producer has the social corporate responsibility and strategy and the program? In your opinion, when is the best time to show it to the Canadian buyer and what is the best way to show it, to present it? Like sending it to uh, a link with website or any kind of images to do that. In what is the best way to show it to the Canadian buyer to prove it? Okay, a Canadian buyer is uh, it's somebody who's working also for business, right? So it comes together. It's either or, no, it comes together. So once I present the company, once I said, who am I? You know, the conversation goes even by email, by Zoom or personally. This is, my name is Maria. My company name is Maria too. I've been in the business for 25 years, blah, blah, blah. My core production is this. This is my price list. This is my uh, catalog. This is my... Uh, history, and this is my social responsibility. They come together. If you have a program, you show your program. And if you're doing online by, by email, you talk about that at the beginning. You put the social responsibility at the same level as business. Business and social responsibility, they go together because as I said, two years and a half working with a factory, ready to produce containers and containers of garments. And one little thing for social responsibility, decline and cancel the production and cancel the order. So we don't want to be risky in that part. We want them to know from the beginning, I do have the product, I do have the price, I do have the quality, I do have the production time, and I do have this an amazing program or whatever it is on your behalf for social responsibility. They combine together. Why? Because it's value added. So they understand that your product can be 25 cents higher than the one from China or from other place, but 25 cents are going to your social responsibility program. They combine together. It's, a, it's very, like it depends on the buyers. Some buyers are more sensitive, but right now, because it's, it's, it's very, a very important topic, every buyer is aligned. Unless they are buyers who have only one boutique and they don't have the budget to uh, work with you and you don't have the time because you're, uh, your producer, your production is very big. So goes together. Don't wait until the last moment. That's what I said. At the beginning, I present you the business part and I said, okay, now you're throwing me on the CSR. Yes, you come in together, hand by hand. One depends on the other one because it doesn't matter how beautiful your product is. And I remember I told you the story about uh, Joe Fresh. Joe Fresh, a well-known company, buyers from Canada and they are around the world. And Joe Fresh was buying from a specific place in Bangladesh. And one day we saw the news that it was a factory 
building an old building on fire. Everybody died. It was a, it was a disaster. And then the, the news came three days later that Joe Fresh was producing in that factory. Joe Fresh never recovered, never recovered again. Around the world, they have to close all the boutiques. We do have a couple of them, but he has to sell it. The owner has to sell, had to, to sell the, the, the business because that was a social responsibility aspect. Nobody wanted to buy a garment, even if it was for $1.99 in silk, for a garment that it was produced by somebody who died due to this issue of irresponsibility. It was the, you know, the, the building was old, it was packed of employees without sleeping, without eating, without living. It was a very damaging thing to happen to this Canadian company. So be careful with that because, because it doesn't have to be to that extreme situation, but it can be something that it will guide the buyer, the buyer and the company can lose the business just for a mistake with social responsibility. And you claim that you're saving the dogs, for example, and you're producing puffy jackets and you claim and you put the picture in your jacket, blah, blah, blah. And then you're killing the dogs anywhere. <laughs> it's gonna be like a disaster for the buyer and for you. But, but, but believe me, it's gonna close the door for your country. Nobody's gonna make business with Ukraine anymore because one company reflects the behavior of the other ones. So uh, my suggestion, my honest advice for you is be, be honest with the buyer. For example, you're new, you're trying to create. You said, you know what, uh, Maria, uh, I'm the buyer. Uh, Maria, you know what, uh, I do want to pursue on this line with my social responsibility and getting the budget to get there. And this is the program I'm, I'm working on it. I don't have it yet, but I'm working on it. Fine, be open, be honest. Honesty is a lot, uh, has to do a lot with social responsibility. But for you, if you wanna, if you already have established your program, you present it at the same time in a quick email. No, like a 10 pages email. My, my name is this, my company is this. I want to, to use your time to, for you to check my website. My prices are very competitive and I also have an amazing CSR program. And you put the pictures there or you put the, you paste the link there and that create the interest. I don't know if that respond, Olga. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your answer. And I think that we will now pass the floor to you, to our next speaker, to Michael, to comment on your on your speech as well, uh, Michael Hopkins, who is the founder and co-founder of the Institute of Responsible Leadership. And Dr. Michael Hopkins is an acknowledged researcher who is specializing in the corporate social responsibility and sustainable development of businesses issues. In 1988, he has created his own research company, MGIC. Uh, international TD, which is based in London, that he still manages. So Michael has been collaborating with the main companies and organizations as IBM, United Nations, IFA, and he has been teaching in Georgia universities and universities in the US and in Kenya that he's currently based on. He's been working in the Indian Institute of Technology. In 2018, Michael Hopkins has become the founder and the member of the Institute for his Responsible Leadership, London. So, Michael, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, um, Olga. And can you hear me okay? Uh, I hope so. Um, I'm uh, tak, tak. speaking to you from the beautiful city of Nairobi in, in Africa, um, where I've been trapped a little bit because of, of COVID. And we haven't mentioned that. I might mention that a little bit. What I'm going to do in... Uh, 15, 15 minutes, I think I'm going to try and stick to, is to do uh, my presentation in two parts. One is I want to relate to what Maria said, and also to the questions that were asked, and also then to present you some uh, simple ideas so that you can take it forward. So Maria uh, 
covered many aspects of, of social responsibility. Uh, the term itself has got uh, many acronyms. A corporate citizenship is one of them. Some people call it corporate sustainability uh, and so on. Um, what, what I've done, I've, I've worked on uh, corporate social responsibility for nearly 25 years. And th these days I, I also spend an awful lot on uh, the issue of sustainability. Um, so I call this uh, work on CSR, CSR being the process and sustainability being the, the goal of the process. And let me just, as an aside, um, the pandemic that is going on now right across the world affecting us all and i'm sure we're all worried about it um it will it will certainly be over um within the next five six months not totally i unfortunately like the flu it's always going to be to be with us but we human beings around the world are going to cope with it um, but unfortunately there are other uh, are dangers lurking on the horizon and perhaps the biggest one and because it's long term in nature is the question of the environment. And people are incredibly worried that global warming, which is up, might be irreversible and could create enormous damage, far bigger than any pandemic that we've seen up to now. Um, and so the Paris Accord is incredibly important, but it's also important for us, what we're doing. And as Maria said, what sorts of things are we doing in a, in our companies and in our also our behavior and, and in our life to think about social responsibility, but also to think about responsibility, to think about sustainability issues. The issue of social responsibility is probably one of the biggest topics in the world right now. It's unbelievable what's happened this year as companies have moved over into thinking about much more how they fit in society, how society is treating them, how they're treating their employees and so on. And Maria made um, a big statement about the word stakeholders. And I'm going to focus on that in, in my words here. Um, CSR is not complicated, it's, it's simple. It's not expensive. In fact, probably many of you have been doing it all your lives already. For instance, being courteous to your customers, you've been doing that forever. That's certainly one part of corporate social responsibility. And of course, a key stakeholder is your customer. And we'll, I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, let me just pick up again on, on, on Maria. When she talk, spoke about uh, stakeholders, she also spoke about um, the different sectors. She, she focused mainly on the apparel sector. Um, and you could well ask, is social responsibility different across sectors? Well, certainly it is. I mean, if you're working in the agricultural industry or producing uh, food products, it's going to be very different. Your collection of things that you'll be doing on social responsibility than if you're in the service sector or in the uh, technology sector or in the social media sector. So the service sector is going to be very, very different from agriculture and also from the apparel, apparel sector. Um, Maria also mentioned a number of things not to do. And I think two things that came out to me of her speech, one was don't bluff, be honest, dialogue with the people that you're working with. We're not all perfect, none of us is perfect, we try. And if people know that you're trying to do things, you're halfway there. I'm sure that, that rings with all of you. Uh, my brother always says that perfection is paralysis. Perfection is paralysis. Yes, we should have a goal. Yes, should we have aims. Yes, we all must try and be better but none of us is gonna be really, really perfect. Let's try and move towards that. And if our customers know that we're trying, even in difficult circumstances, then they're gonna be very impressed. And of course, customers and the ones we're talking about today, the customers in, in Canada um, are seriously interested in social responsibility. And most of the concerns are obvious. 
they certainly don't want to buy products which is going to injure their health, and they don't want to buy products which have been uh, produced which are environmentally damaging. So they're interested in things such as, as Maria said, uh, such as how you use water and how you dispose of it. Um, the questions I thought were, were very illuminating, and let me just go through them very, very quickly. Um, uh, you, you mentioned BLCI. Um, I looked it up actually on the internet and I couldn't actually find it. It, it came, uh, but don't worry about that. In fact, the problem with certification is that there are so many, and then when there are so many, what, what do you go for? The, the big one in the room is ISO, um, in, in the International Standard for Organizations, and it's called ISO 26000. Um, but it's mainly for larger companies or medium-sized companies, not so much for, for small companies. In fact, if I've mentioned in the, in the chat room that if you go onto my website, you can see a checklist of things which I call HCSRM, in fact, the Hopkins CSR model, and it's on the website CSRFI, csrfi.com. Uh, again, I put that. It's the first line of the, of the, of the chat room, and, and you might want to go and, and look at that. Um, in terms of certification, you could get very, very cute, confused very, very quickly because you've probably heard about SDGs. You've probably heard about the UN Global Compacts. Uh, one of the biggest organizations is the Global Reporting Initiative that very big companies try and follow, not so well. So I think, and I'm going to suggest a little methodology when I get to my slides, which is basically base yourself on stakeholder responsibility. And don't worry that social responsibility is a, a, an expensive cost. And when should you do it? Basically all the time. Never give up, it's always with you. And as I think you're realizing as you're listening. And, so, and the, one of the, your last questions was, when is the best time to show corporate social responsibility to your clients? All the time. Drop it in all the time. And that would really help. Now, let me switch over to my, uh, maybe, maybe what right I could do right now, uh, Olga, uh, before I jump into my presentation is maybe there might be one or two questions on what I've already said before before I jump on. W would that be acceptable, Olga? Yes, Michael, yes, Michael, then you can you can be free with answering the questions if it will be more comfortable for you. So you can um, you can already answer those questions also that have been posed to Maria as well, because like um, speaking on in what way, what do the Canadian buyers expect from Ukrainian producers if we speak about the corporate social responsibility? Uh, maybe you can comment upon that. And in what way we should inform the buyers that you have this kind of strategy for the corporate social responsibility, how to put it in the best way, how to show it according to the best practices, how to present it to the buyer? Okay. Then, then let me switch into my presentation because in there I've got some of the answers to that question. Now, the best way is to share my screen, is that right? And let me uh, pick up on... Okay. Um, just a sec. I hope everybody can see this. Let me just go to the beginning. Uh, so very quickly, um, talking about corporate social responsible standards and, and best examples, um, especially in the fast moving consumer goods sectors in, in North America. Um, these are uh, six questions which uh, Maria uh, covered very briefly. And let me, let me go through, through um, each of them very, very, very quickly because they do cover the questions that were answered. Um, let me go. So, but before I start, and, and, and I've said many times, and I did in my, the last Zoom seminar that I did, was that CSR is treating key stakeholders responsibly. Corporate social responsibility is treating key stakeholders responsibly. 
very easy to say. And in fact, I say to all my students and business colleagues and people that I meet, just remember that responsibility. Now you would ask me, what do you mean by treating? How do we go about it? What do you mean by key stakeholders? How do we choose them? Well, who are our stakeholders? And then what do we mean by, by responsibly? Uh, well, I'm sorry to say that this book of 500 pages uh, does cover those issues. But anyway, if you go, you can actually find that for free on ResearchGate. Let me move on to the next one. So my, the first question, if I am a Ukrainian supplier, how do I make buyers aware that I am implementing CSR standards? Well, what I did was I, I, I looked around and I came across um, Nordstrom. Nordstrom is a big multinational uh, um, uh, clothes manufacturer uh, based in, uh, well, right across the world. I'm sure you've heard of it, but it's based in Seattle of all places in, uh, in the United States. And um, I, I've, I've worked out a video of only a few minutes, which gives you an idea of how Nordstrom handles CSR in the apparel sector. Now, um, I'm not going to show the video because it, technically it's a little bit difficult, but if you look in the chat room, uh, the uh, reference to the, the website where the video can be found, which is on the CSR page of Nordstrom, which will give you a lot of uh, uh, replies to some of the questions that you've asked. And then maybe, maybe after you've looked at that, maybe you'll be interested to make your own video it's incredibly easy these days to do these things. I've been making videos, actually, if you look at my website, csrfi.com, I've been making vid videos for the last 10 years, and it's fairly simple. You can do it very simply with a simple camera like this one. Quite a good one, this. Didn't cost me too much, a couple of hundred dollars, I think. Well, for a company, uh, it's possible. And you, and you can make beautiful videos for, for that. So that would be good. And, and to put that on your website or even show that to, to your customers and your suppliers and your, your customers, I'm sorry. Um, this is Nordstrom. And if you go onto their website, you can see this uh, uh, picture and the, the video, and it will tell you a little bit about what Nordstrom does. Let me just briefly say what you would find because you know what are the main factors that buyers look for in potent suppliers? And Nordstrom says, essentially, whatever you do, leave it better than you found it. So that's what Nordstrom says. For them, that means doing our best to support the many people and communities that they serve. And it means respecting the environment by reducing our impacts and conserving resources wherever we can. So Maria covered most of those things, but this is what the very big companies are doing. Again, if you look at the Nordstrom website, it will give you lots of ideas. I'm not gonna go into great, great detail on all that. But of course, why do buyers care about suppliers CSR? Well, the key issue is reputation, as you know. Um, I don't know if you can see this whole slide, let me move that thing over a little bit. Um, the famous uh, American entrepreneur, Warren Buffett, a famous investor who's made a fortune out of investing. Is Warren Buffett socially responsible? That's a good question. I actually cover that in my latest book. Good and bad, probably like all of us. But Warren Buffett was given his whole fortune to Bill Gates and Bill Gates be doing a wonderful job in investigate, investing in anti-malaria ma malaria. Uh, viruses and also against against COVID. Um, these guys are very, very active in that. And uh, Warren Buffett has put in, I, I think, hundreds of billion dollars that he's just given his whole fortune to Bill Gates. But the important thing that he says, which you all know, is that reputation takes decades, many, many years to create and only minutes to destroy. You really know that which is one idea comes up and everybody says, oh, that's totally wrong. My company's not like that, but you can't destroy it. So you have to be very, very careful about language 
And of course, it's all to do with your reputation. So how and where should suppliers present their CSR standards to buyers? One of the questions to Maria as well. Simply always be prepared. It's going to come up continually. And in fact, you can normally judge from the attitude of the people. Quite often, you know, we're human beings and it's even, it's difficult. I know via Zoom, it's much better when we're in person to judge somebody and their, and their character and what they're saying, but always be prepared. And when you're in the presence of buyers and you, they're asking you about your social responsibility standards, it would be pretty easy. You say, well, sir, madam, we focus on treating our key stakeholders responsibly. Who are our key stakeholders? Let me just go into that after my fifth point. But first of all, number five in the list of questions, does CSR help to differentiate a supplier's product brand? Of course, it's absolutely obvious. Again, link again to reputation, which can be destroyed. destroyed. And again, I, as I mentioned in my preliminary remarks, and Maria said also, don't bluff. Tell people the truth. Tell people what you're trying to do and where you're going. People like that. People understand that. You have to create confidence with your buyers, as you do with anybody, as you do with your friends, and, and you do with your, your colleagues, and as you do with um, uh, the government, and as you do with uh, the legal profession, and so on. You, you have to keep trust, and a big thing of CSR is trust. So what are international CSR best practices? Uh, again, look at Nordstrom, and look at what they're doing. Look again at my website, CSRFI, where I discuss the Hopkins CSR model, and you can use that as a checklist, and it's pretty easy to use in small and medium-sized companies, but certainly keep the stakeholders informed. Nordstrom has a letter that includes things like, we've long believed that we're all made better by the diversity that exists within our communities. And Nordstrom also says, it begins by listening to our customers and our employees and our neighbors as they share what it's like to be a person who's different in our country today. It's working to ensure our teams and leaders represent the diversity we seek. And I would say, check out ISO 26000, which covers this in much more detail. And I know there are bigger companies and smaller companies there. The smaller companies would find it would overwhelm them right now. So you might want to look at, at what I've done on my HCSRM and the, and the bigger uh, medium-sized companies might want to have a look at uh, ISO uh, 26000. Now coming to the end, stakeholder selection, you have to say who are the key stakeholders. They've got to be important to you. And you will need to identify them and satisfy something like this. This is your company in the middle. And these are the sorts of stakeholders that would be important to you. So there are many of them. And for, for, some are not mentioned here. One important one is the one at the top, is the press and the social media. Um, especially these days, social media can be devastating if they get it wrong about you. So you need to work on that a little bit too. Um, and you can see in there, I've got CUTIS, very important organization, which I know is helping you to promote uh, exports from Ukraine to Canada. Excellent organization, and it's there to help. I know, I know they would say the same thing too. And you see other things, Ukraine laws, environment issues, and so on. Let me move, you'll get a copy of this. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time with this. Gender has already been mentioned by, by Maria and I think another speaker. Uh, certainly treat gender concerns, responsibility, as far as possible ensure equality of treatment of men and women and to ensure equal pay for equal work. Certainly create a working group of men and women to discuss this and don't be frightened to publicize all your good work. Similarly with the environment as a stakeholder. Environment has many stakeholders. Certainly 
look at the pollution from your activities and try and correct it, make sure that environmental conditions for, mer for workers meet the standard, create maybe a working group in your company if you're a big one. If you're very small, of course, you, you might just want to discuss that one day over a vodka or whatever, um, where, where you are. And of course, try and report on progress annually at least, not in long papers, maybe you'll do it in a video on, on a website, uh, but something that your buyers can actually have access to. And don't forget, treat key, st key stakeholders responsibly. And one thing which is, I, I just want to emphasize is, and I did the last time I gave a, a speech, this, this is, as you see myself in front of actually a football stadium, I'm actually an advisor to the European Football Association and their social responsibility. And one thing that's important is that, that your public entities, which are well known, and if there are people who love football watching, um, I know the two big, big uh, clubs are Shakhtar Donetsk, and I probably, I hope I've spelled, said it correctly, and, and Dynamo Kiev. And I actually, I remember visiting the Dynamo Kiev Stadium when I was in, in Kiev. But believe it or not, those clubs need to behave responsibly too. They need that their players are responsible, that they, you respect diversity, that if people have got different colors or different shapes or so in their team, that you respect it. Look at the game. And I'm sure most of you are like that. There are some, some idiots who don't respect that in the football world. But that's the lack of social responsibility. And also convince the players to get involved in local communities and so on. Um, but uh, that's all I'm, because I'm not talking about... Uh, uh, about that right now, but I'm just going to come to an end there and come back into the, into the main screen. I, I've gone on probably a little bit too long. Let me just stop sharing my screen. Um, I, I probably haven't answered all the questions. Let me just check from, from my notes. Um, I think one of the things was somebody said and asked, um, yeah, the, 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 the key thing was about certification. The problem is around the world that there are so many standards that every country, the EU has got a new set of rules. I know the Swiss are voting on them next month on a, on a set of social responsibility rules, the Swiss in Switzerland that is. And so standards are different everywhere and they're not, there's, not, there's no, no one that exists that can be applied. I'm sorry, it's not as easy as that, but in a sense, it is easy. And my last word, and I'd, I'd be happy to accept a few questions is, you know what I'm gonna say, treat key stakeholders <laughs> responsibly. And thank you very much for, for listening and for allowing me into your beautiful country, which I have visited a couple of times and do hope to come again one day in some guise or another. Дякуємо, Майкле. Дуже дякуємо. Дуже будемо щасливі приймати вас тут в Україні. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll be happy to see you in Ukraine. Unfortunately, we're out of schedule a little bit, but I hope that you will stay with us till the end of the presentation. So I would like to ask to all of our listeners and audience, please uh, type in the chat all the questions that you would like to have to Michael. We will have the opportunity to ask some questions to our experts in the end of our webinar. But if you do not mind, I would like to to say a couple of words about the cutest project has done in Ukraine. What have we been doing? What were the lessons learned from our side? What have we learned from supporting the Ukrainian enterprises while entering Canadian markets? And then we will also have good presentations from our guests. And I hope that we will still make it on time. So if you don't mind, I would like to share a couple of slides with you so that you will pay attention to those issues that are very important from our side as well. And those, let us say, lessons learned that we've had after trying to get our prices into Canadian markets. So first of all, what I wanted to outline and I wanted to emphasize for you is that this basically we have to understand the differences in the business cultures, in Canadian business culture and Ukrainian business culture. The most important thing that, that's is outstanding for Canadian businesses is the respect to all of their opinions and 
And those are the values. Those are the values that are going to regulate the Canadian business culture. The Canadian workspace culture is first of all about the skills of good communication and listening to all of the points of view and the communication with other people, the ability to communicate with your colleagues and your managers and to understand the huge variety of the cultural approaches in the working places. So the most important is communication. You have to be ready to compromise. If those compromises are going to be a win-win situation for both, of the sides, for both of the sides in order to move the negotiations for further. As far as the Canadians believe the win-win situation is the best, they're expect to have the same respect and confidence from your side as well. What is considered rude? If you will say that you will come up at three o'clock and the person is expecting for you to be at three o'clock sharp, even if you are going to say it's only in the virtual, if you will be late for more than 15 minutes is a very rude violation and you will at least need an explanation or an explanation to that. And if you will have, uh, if you will have no excuse or explanation, it can be considered as an offense. The mentality, the, the business mentality, the business culture is different all over Canada, depending on the region, as well as the business structures are very different. So before you go into visit Canada or before you meet the, your possible buyer, you have to make some home task. You have to do some research about the contact information or the re region where you're going to be working with. That will be appreciated. The business communication is quite direct. You do not have to find additional interpretation for your or messages because everything is quite direct and straightforward. Please make sure you respect the time of your interlocutor. And please make sure that you have to follow uh, and have to respect everyone. So people would like to be heard and would like to be listened to. The decisions are not made unless they will understand all of the factors that are influencing the specific decision in place. The working times Monday, Friday from nine o'clock to five o'clock. Mornings are usually the best times for any kind of mission meeting sets. The prep pre-work, the preparatory work, I'm not going to draw your attention to that. Those are the standard practices and all the companies working with QTs, they're already aware of it. This is all some of the steps that you have to make in order to get prepared for meeting your potential bias. But I would like to draw your attention to the expectation because the expectations is the most important work that has to be done. Managing your expectation, the most important thing from working in our project. All of our colleagues, all of our employees, they believe they want to have the huge order with containers and multi-million agreements. That's okay for the businesses. Whether those are expectations realistic, whether we believe that the newborn baby will co conduct a world record in running a hundred meters race. So no, we just have to understand that it is an un unviable expectations. You have to understand all of the risks of exporting to Canada and you have to be ready to face all of the challenges that you will go on this path. The position of the producers who believes that their product is unique, that it will sell with no efforts invested is the wrong one and shows that you're not ready to start exporting. The producers should also understand what will be needed, that additional work will be needed and the adaptation of the product should will be needed there. As well, uh, the producers should understand that organizing procurement is a long term game and it not will be under your rules. It will only be made after there's a lot of work that has been already invested and some meetings with the buyers have been invested. The producer should also understand what is expected of them and it's also expected that a company will precisely and promptly react to all of the inquiries that will be provided by the buyers. Even if you are currently signing for the unified format of collaboration and negotiations is virtual, the whole civilized world is currently living according to the social responsibility rules that have been written throughout the decades. So if you would like to export, you have to be aware of the best practices and you have to learn how to deal with the best standards. When you have a good approach and nicely formulated issues, then the corporate social responsibility rules, they will give you a benefit compared to your competitors and they will build up the trust with the potential buyers from the very beginning of your relations. And having this opportunity, I would like to invite you to our next webinar on how to virtually participate in the trade fairs that we're going to have on the 22nd of October.
So this is basically all I wanted to cover very briefly from my side. And if you'll have no questions to me, then I have the question for you to answer, which is, are you aware between what is in common between the stylish uniform of Ukrainian police and with the nice French coats that has been known as a new new modern? And Larissa Terminesan, who is the manager of the old text export company, she will answer this issue. And also Larissa will share the practical experience of introducing the corporate social responsibility program in their enterprise on how the negotiations took place with the Canadian buyers and all of the additional challenges by entering the Canadian market. Larissa, the floor is yours. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to be invited to this project. I would like to give you a little bit of explanation about our company. We have been producing over uh, have been operating over coats, uh, the uh, women's apparel. We have two factories in Ukraine. We have been working for more than 20 years already in the market. We have been working with different European projects and partnerships. So basically we're working with big companies with uh, the world known brands, the companies that has been working for many years with us already and for more than 20 years that we have already been working on the markets, we have, of course, have seen the different demands and requirements for the product. The style of our corporate work has changed. And we've always tried to meet all of the requirements that have been available at the international market for us to strive. I've also prepared a very brief presentation in order to share our experience and I would like to share my screen as well. Can you please tell us, can you see that? Can you see the presentation? You can see the screen? Yes, yes, we can see the screen. So I would like to start with saying that in the recent years, the sustainability definition has become a very important definition, a mainstream for everyone. And for a couple of years ago, it was something unclear for us. We didn't know what is it about. It was something new. And for us as a producer, it was very important to understand what is our role in overall sustainable development. And for the buyers, as for uh, as well as for the aware consumers and customers, it is very important to understand all of the supply chain for your product, how your product is created, starting from the origins of the yarn and ending up with the final product being delivered to the shop. And every brand that respects itself, they have to know this information from your suppliers to know where and, and under which conditions your product has been created, the product that you present in your shops. Thus, the most important and key factors for us, for our side, is about transparency. So the full confidence between the supplier, between the client and between the company that buys the final product. And as as Maria has said as well, there are some that buyers, they can, they have the opportunity to check whatever they would like to see at the production line of your products. Of course, it depends on the buyer. If it's going to be the big buyer, if it's going to be the big companies, if they, they have own their own social standards in a way, they can also, uh, order an inspection and auditing from a third party and they can audit and monitor the enterprise according to their standards, according to their demands. If it's going to be a smaller buyer, then they can send, they cannot provide the social corporate responsibility auditing. They can come on their own or they can send a representative so they can just visit your factory on their own to check up what is going on there. So we have to be open and we are open. Our production capacities that are fully open we're ready to show in what why under what conditions and circumstances the product that the buyer would like to buy is created so in this line in this chain in the supply chain and the creation chain we understand that the social responsibility is one of the key factors for us as well 
I also would like to say that the social responsibility is not about the production, it's also about people. And the main thing important here is about the human resources. The human resources who are helping us to create the product. And they are playing the main role in our overall production line and in the, the production chain. For example, in our enterprise, we have created all of the needed conditions for the comfortable work, for the good work. We have equipped the catering room, the dining room. We have the changing rooms that are meeting all of the conditions for labor. We just created all of the conditions so that the person would feel comfortable in their working place. Another important key factor from our experience is the safety measures at any kind of enterprise. So basically, the most important things for the social standards is about safety and the sustainability, sustainability, and having the legal and reliable sources. What we mean by legal, this you have to be, you mean like your employers, employees have to be officially employed. Of course, we didn't get to that overnight and we needed a couple of years of working, of understanding all of those re requirements and a lot of investment in order to get to this level that we currently have at our enterprise. In the last two years, we have completely updated all of our production capacities. We have renovated all of our buildings we have the new systems of air conditioning systems in place and new ventilation system in place. So basically we have renovated all of our premises according to the safety requirements and according to the fire safety requirements and to the corresponding requirements for the labor core code. And as we all know that the apparel and the fashion industry is one of the industries that causes a lot of harm to the environment. And we're trying to also be very aware and conscious about this issue. So that is why at our factories, we have uh, the, the containers for sorting out all of our garbage and we're also using the energy efficient lighting we have also have signed up an agreement to you to recycle and utilize uh, the garment leftovers that we have of course we understand that there are certain things that we should continue in developing and that we should have to and it's not our final point, it's not our final goal. There's a lot of things that we have to do in order to decrease the energy consumption and in order to minimize the leftovers and the waste. And to wrap up, I also would like to say that it's very important. It's very important in order to start working with our buyers. It is very important for each and every buyer. It's very important that it's very important to have the quality evaluation in place. It's very important to check out the quality that the enterprise provides and also to check out whether the, the enterprise meets the social standards, which is the social corporate responsibility audit. I do believe that it's not important to get to the better and higher level for your production, for your factory, and it's not a possible to get to the international level and start working with the renowned buyers. Thank you very much, Larissa. We have a question to you. Uh, in what way, in what way the COVID-19 pandemic has influenced the work of your enterprise and how have you reacted to the certain limitations that this pandemic has caused to all of us? Well, yes, I really wanted to say that COVID-19, it also has influenced us as well. And 
we haven't closed, we haven't stopped the work of our enterprise uh, for not a single day, even though a lot of enterprises have been closed down. We really tried to work uh, according to all of the security and safety measures, and we've started to produce masks, safety masks, not only for Ukraine, but as for European clients as well. For our employers, we have provided them with masks when it was really hard to get the safety masks in, in, in the drug stores. So we have provided them for free in the offices and the print out our production line. We have bought the sanitizers and we have provided all of the needed security and all the needed all of this needed disinfection have been provided to all of the additional premises we worked we have additional opportunity to get our people to work so we have had the transportation from there for them organized under this uncertain conditions so i might say that yes, that was a very complicated and challenging period for all of us, but maybe it has even helped us to understand how we can work under more complex circumstances and has given us the opportunity to rethink and review of what is our father on development should be like. Thank you very much. And, and to give us understanding of what are our opportunities. Yes, thank you very much. There is a stimulating effect to coronavirus. Uh, thank you very much, because uh, because like, if we'll have any additional questions, then thank you very much that you will still stay with us. So please let us know in the chat box if you'll have any questions. But I would like to once again remind you that unfortunately, the QTS project has been built as a five year initiative of the Canadian government and it will wrap up its work this year. And the organization that will continue in the development of business relations between Ukraine and Canada will farther on be CUCC, the Canada-Ukraine Commercial Chamber. And the CUCC history has started in 1992, when the group of Canadian businessmen of Ukrainian origins have decided to help Ukraine to reform the economics. And currently now, the chamber has already accounts for more than 250 members from all of the countries, from both of the countries, and is now the center of the economical development of relations between Ukraine and Canada. But I think that I will better pass the floor to my colleagues in the project, the project manager in QTs and the acting director of the Canadian Canada Ukraine uh, commercial chamber Emma Turos. Emma, are you with us? Can you please because of you here? Yes, thank you very much. Olga, thank you very much. I'm pleased to welcome Maria and Michael and all of the participants that we currently have. And I can see a lot of friendly faces here. If I may, I will also like to show our logo a little bit, but I know we're already uh, off of the schedule. So I will just give a, just a couple of words. So you can see that this is, you can see this is our logo. So I'm not going to go throughout uh, my presentation, but I will just give a couple of words just to outline what is our Chamber of Commerce will be doing. Yes, of course, after the project will stop its work, a lot of the overall results of the project, of QTIS projects, all the things that we have provided to our regional chambers, and we would like to deepen our collaboration with them because we have a huge responsibility right now to empower and preserve everything Thing that has been done by QT's project in these five years. We would like to continue and collaborate with the Ministry of Economical Development of Ukraine and with other organizations that we have been working throughout these five years. But I really also wanted to say that currently we're planning certain changes in how our chamber will work and we would really like to concentrate on the development of the exporting opportunities from Ukraine to Canada. But just a couple of words about the topic of the current webinar. 
as you have already seen, as Maria Guzman has said, and as all uh, Golga has said, and Mr. Hopkins has said, that the communication is very important from all over the world. There's only one channel of communication that we currently have, uh, the online channel, that will still continue in developing in the next months. We do not have uh, now any chance for a mistake because the phone call or a video call is not the personal communication. We can find some best best ways how we can you know with a gesture with a tone of voice we can facilitate or mitigate something we currently know that the buyers under really challenging moments they want to come up with all of the risks possible consider all of the risks they would like to avoid all of this risk and we have to help them with that so basically with the corporate social responsibility with how the product is being made it will mitigate the risks for our stakeholders and for our buyers and for our employees as well and our customers our clients they want to have all of the benefits available from the product it may be not the profit but it also will be like the services the time for communication that is saved and preserving their efforts and time and I would also like to say what is very important for all of us in this case, what we should draw our attention to. We know what we have to know. We all have in our in our books, in our toolkits, and our experts have already told you throughout the hundreds of hours of webinars and seminars that we have provided to you and with all of those materials that they have provided to you it's a treasure to keep that's true we already know what we have to do because five years ago when we have started we didn't know what we should do but now we know it but for all of the companies you know it is an when we are going through the books, when we're going through the automated systems, but you know, it still works as in circus. You know, in circus, you provide the knowledge from the teacher to a student. And you know, there's no there's no book that will tell you how to make a proper acrobatic jump. So basically we have to know it from the first hand experience from the experts who know what needed to be done. They see the company and they tell us what they have to do. So that is why we have the chamber in place we have a lot of people who know they have the experience that is needed to you so please do not be afraid to spend a bit of time and money to come to a consultant to come to a person who has this eye who has this lens who has this knowledge so please continue and working with our consultants continue to collaborate with us if maria or phil or bertrand will go in to collaborate with us it would be very very good for all of us on now we know how we should do that this is the most important and difficult issue because not a single book will not give you the best way of how to do that how to implement this this is a joint work between a professional between a consultant and your enterprise and here you have to decide what kind of resource you have and how, how you will find the way to do something and i would like to once again emphasize it because a lot of things are now relying on us. I've had these meetings with our another company, you know, so when I'm meeting only one with company a day, this is this kind of this period, unfortunately now. But what has to be done in order to make things happen? And I just want to tell you that that every single formula, every single, every single evaluation form has a dream too deep two dozens of calls like my colleagues are already waiting for a small feedback form and i have called five times to the to the company and i have learned that the people are now in the hospital and they're in the hospital are filling in those feedback forms so can you just imagine what kind of very big work stands behind those small advice and small steps forwards so that is why i would like to ask you to collaborate with our chamber so we would like to to ask you to become our members together with our regional chambers of commerce to do some certain follow-ups that you can be provided to come up to meet one another to work and help with our companies each and every company of us cannot work on our, on our own and this is the truth because olga knows that we're now preparing one event when we have um, around how many like 50 50 companies from other parts of the world per one company from ukraine yes it will be really hard for us to be competitive unless we all come together at least we all stand as one so i would like to once again uh, 
invite you to the further collaboration with us and to continue in the work that the, the cutest project has started and it has been a great success for all of us thank you very much for your attention Thank you very much, Emma. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We're out of schedule with our webinar, but there was a very interesting topic, a very interesting topic, very interesting, intriguing speakers, bright presentation, a lot of advice. If you have any additional questions, you have this opportunity to do that through our website, through our Facebook account. So please do not be shy. Address us. We will pass those questions to Maria, to Michael, if there will be this need, and you will receive the answers to all of those questions. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I do hope that you have had the answers to your questions on how to use the best practices of the corporate social responsibility in your company and how they are connected to the successful export into Canada. All of this information on our event you might find at the cutest site and our account in Facebook. Using this opportunity as well, I would like to invite you to participate in our training on, on Thursday on how to participate in the vir virtual trade fairs, on how to do the best. We'll have Maria Guzman, she will share with us. We have also invited the um, apparel textile source in North America America director, Mr. John Benka, to join us. So you will have this opportunity to ask this professional in real time. Thank you very much for your time. Stay safe. I wish you all the success. Goodbye.